<laughs> so, as we've been asking everyone, nice to be back at Blues. How's it been for you? Oh, yeah, well, it's fantastic to be back here at Blues Fest. I mean, I've got to say, big hats off to everyone involved with running it and Peter Noble and all the crew. It's got to be um, incredibly difficult. I mean, it would have, I can't imagine how much money it would have cost them having to cancel and reschedule three times in two years. So, you know, a few people have said, oh, that must have been really disappointing as a, as a performer, but compared to organising the whole shebang, mm. uh, I can't imagine. Yeah, so big congratulations to the festival for getting it, you know, keeping it going, keeping the spirit, you know, and not losing heart. Mm. And nice for you as a player, especially being one of the few really full, true blues players oh, from the blues background. <laughs> well, you were, you know, just, that was sort of how you were built initially, I guess, but um, well, how, how's it been personally for you? Well, it's always great fun playing here, I and mean, the audiences are fantastic. They're, it, it seems like everyone's got a real appetite for music in general, and rootsy music in particular. So it's very rewarding you know, to play here and to get a chance to, to come after a bunch of years gap and have that sort of hunger in everyone for it to actually take place. You know, we feel it as performers, but you feel it from the audience and everyone. So yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. And uh, how did you enjoy lockdown? Did you get up to anything? I heard you've done a bit How did I enjoy lockdown? Going? I tried. I tried to enjoy it. Um, it wasn't too bad uh, for me. I mean, I couldn't think too far ahead of like, when am I going to be allowed to play music again? When am I going to be allowed to have a function again? Because without knowing when it was going to all kind of finish, I mean, particularly in Melbourne where it was just locked down for seemingly forever, it's what it felt like. Um, it kind of could lead to anxiety if you contemplated too much about when you'd be allowed to play again. Uh, so I just tried not to think about it. And luckily I had things like homeschooling to distract me from thinking about anything too much. Uh, so that stepped into the brink and admirably filled a hole where touring had once been. But um, it wasn't all bad. I mean, I've never had uh, a break from touring. So having it kind of taken out of your hands and just delivered as a fait accompli you're taking a break and it's going to last for a long while. Um, wasn't too bad, actually. I've done a lot of touring, so it's not like I'd forgotten what it was like. Uh, so, um, yeah, as long as I didn't think too much about when will I be allowed to do it again and actually earn a living, then I could cope with it pretty well. I think quite a few people have, not, not a few people have said that, and it's just, you don't even know you're having a, enjoying the break until you've, until you've, uh, got back to touring and then you go, shit, that was well, a nice I mean, reset. <laughs> see, the thing for me was, usually if you if you were to decide to have a break, then you're very conscious of the fact that, well, like, you know, like I can't afford to take a break for too long because I need to earn a living and it's not easy earning a living playing music, so I can't afford to take much of a break, if at all. And then if you do have, you know, a gap, you sort of feel like, well, everyone else is doing stuff and I'm just sort of sitting around. And um, whereas this time round, no one was working. I mean, you know, you could look anywhere and go, oh, I'm doing as many gigs as the Rolling Stones or anyone, you know. So it was a great leveller. Mm. No one was working and no one was expecting you to work. So you could kind of take any edge off yourself and any self-judgment and self-belittlement out of the equation as go, this is just delivered upon me and I have to just accept it. Mm. And so it was kind of cool, actually. Mm. And a Zoom online gig to 17 people doesn't really cut the muscle. <laughs> Yeah, online gigs are okay. Some people thrive on that stuff. I'm not much of a of a um, no. online guy. <laughs> I think I, you um, know, I did a few of them, and it was fine. You know, I quite enjoyed it in a way, but it's not the same. Yeah. So long, just like recording, it's not the same. So I could kind of just go, okay, this is what it is, and I'd try and build in a few things into the experience for myself so that I could enjoy playing to a wall. You know, just set up various booby traps for myself along the way to potentially trip me up. So I did a few of those things just to keep it interesting, keep me on my toes. I think that the reset that you're talking about, having a break, having mm. a hiatus, forced hiatus, sort mm. of works for a festival too because mm. all the crowd's extra eager coming back, all of our crew are fresh and ready to go. Yeah, and there's, I can now. imagine. I hated yeah. editing before, now I quite like it. <laughs> I can imagine that with, with the crew as well. It would be like, yeah, I, mean, I suppose I was gonna say having a break wasn't really a break, was it? Because they set up for three festivals that were cancelled at the last minute. So it's not really like having yeah. a break for the crew, is it? It's like do all of the work in the lead up and then mm. no payoff. So what's your um, 
show today? Have you got any sort of thing? Can you describe well, what you're doing? Well, I, I decided with this weekend I'm going to just bring electric instruments and I'm doing it two-piece with Danny McKenna. Um, so, yeah, that's a point of difference to usually I'm doing a kind of amped up acoustic guitar thing. Um, and it just forces you to change the way you play the instrument a bit, you know, like the particularly right hand when you're picking on the instrument, playing acoustic, you've usually got a bit heavier strings and, and the, the, the geometry is different. And so just having a thinner, you know, solid body electric guitar is about, you know, half the, the depth. And it just, it just forces you to rethink the song on, on the fly. So, you know, but typically I haven't really practiced it up. I've just decided I'll just walk up there and just do whatever song and see how I cope with it. You know, it's, again, it's, it's not a bad thing having little booby traps set for yourself. So deciding to do them on electric guitar, it changes how you play them and then certain things won't work and other things will work and you just find out what those are on the spot and it's react the last to day of the festival, so hopefully you'll, you found out by now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's different songs. I played a set yesterday, I'm going to do completely different songs today because awesome. it would be too easy to just play the same ones again. You've worked that out, so yeah. that's done. You work out a new set today. Cool. Well, thanks for that. That's awesome. Good stuff.